And people think like, oh yeah, we're lifting up women. No, you're actually being partial. You're showing partiality and that's a sin. You're showing partiality that's the opposite of equality. It's the opposite of goodness. It's the opposite of what the right thing to do is. Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and we've got the ERLC not being very ethical coming up next. Right, was your day. We've got our sponsor. Welcome, welcome. I am hoping for 500 subs. If you have not subbed yet, I don't usually try to beg. I'm not trying to beg, but once you get to 500, you get to have the little community tab. So you like the you take those surveys and people are like post. They'll retweet stuff and show a video and you know share something else. Once I hit that. I'm able to use the community tab. So help me get there. I'm less than 50 away. So it is, uh, yeah, I didn't check the number lately, but I'm less than 50. I know that. Anyway, if you haven't subbed, uh, consider doing so. It uh, helps me out and it helps the channel out. So it really does. And it's free, right? So we're going to be looking at the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. It is one of the uh, arms, as it were, of the octopus of the Southern Baptist Convention. Of course, there's the seminaries and the colleges, which there are six seminaries and, and colleges, uh, more colleges than that. Um, there is the uh, ERLC. Of course, there's Guidestone, there's Lifeway, and other things as well. I got an email. So I'm part of, or I don't know if I'm part of it. I, I get emails from the Conservative Baptist Network. And that sounds a little, eh, I don't love the name, but it's 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 fine. Uh, it is. It formed after Resolution 9 in 2019 of basically pushing critical race theory, intersectionality, and all the rest into the Southern Baptist Convention as a tool, analytical tool. And uh, so if you're in the Southern Baptist Convention um, or if you just kind of know about it, there is hope, as it were. Not everybody's woke, even those who are like, oh, I don't think we need this conservative Baptist network. You know, they're not... Again, I want to be generous. I don't. I don't want to be super uh, mean. Although sometimes they might deserve it because let's be real here. But there's a lot of people that are just kind of in this, trying to get in this middle road. And I don't. I don't know if there's much middle road left. I feel like the, the ground is eroding on both sides, where you really have to be, you know, in a, in a particular spot. But anyway, the ERLC, and actually, I did something with. Uh, a couple friends on the ERLC. They had Ed Litton, who's the uh, plagiarizing president, the plagiarizing president. Ooh, I kind of like that. And Fred Luter, uh, who was the president about 10 years ago, first black president, and a couple other people. And it was just a horrendous panel on uh, racial reconciliation. It really was. It wasn't good at all. And we tore it up. You know, again, not mocking or just name calling. That's that's ad hoc or ad hominem. We weren't doing any of that. It was I mean, at the one point, one of the ladies talked about the gospel of right, racial reconciliation. And it's like they're they're telling us up front. Now, is she meaning to be subversive? I don't know. I really don't know. But she is, even if she's not meaning to be. So anyway, uh, the ERLC, of course, it was re led by Russell Moore before uh, last year. He left, and then he left the Southern Baptist Convention altogether to go to Christianity Today, and it's just a mess. Well, I got an email from Conservative Baptist Network, and I was talking about different things. They've got a couple different emails that go out each week. This is Travel Tuesday, so this is yesterday. ERLC is trying to steer Southern Baptist to vote Democrat. So here's the thing. Let's not forget, like, David Platt, uh, uh, Mark Dever and Jonathan Lehman and a lot of other guys, especially guys that are on the East Coast or near D.C., they want to be seen by people, especially the world, as not, you know, stooges for the GOP. And, like, I'm not a stooge for the GOP. I don't even think I'm actually a registered GOP. No, I think about it. The Democrats, the leftists, have no problem saying the GOP is this, they're biggest, they're this, this. Of course you should vote Democrat. Of course you should. And yet other people, and even leftist churches, liberal churches, you know, the, the rainbow flag, the this, the all lives uh, don't matter, only black lives matter. Like on and on, like all the stuff. They have no problem saying. And yet conservatives who are like, yeah, we really should have, you know, traditional family values. We really should have this and that. Um, they don't. 
They're like, well, you know, maybe you could vote vote either way. I'm not sure who this is. Coulter. I don't even know how to say that, her first name. ERLC and Q&A can, continues to pit black against white. Claims theological conservative Christians can reasonably vote for Democratic candidates. Downplays the atrocity of abortion being a reason enough to be one issue voter. So midterms are coming up. Now, again, if you think baby murder is cool, like, and you're a Christian, there's something seriously wrong with you. There really is. And you need to get help because baby murder is not okay. In fact, the more and more you pay attention to it, the more and more you can understand that there isn't even really ever, barely ever, a reason to kill your baby. There just isn't. You know, there's that one in a million chance sort of thing or one in a hundred thousand chance of the woman's health. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about illicit relationships, one night stands. Oh, this is inconvenient. Forget it. I'm just going to go, boom, nip it in the bud. Tom Buck, part of the Conservative Baptist Network, or at least he's friendly with it. I'm old enough to remember when the ERLC took an unwavering position against anyone voting for pro-murder and pro-LGBT political candidate. So here it is. What are they talking about? They're talking about this on the ERLC website. You can see this right here on the ERLC website. These are not my, my screenshots. These are from a couple days ago, uh, about a month ago, I guess, on the ERL, ERLC website. A Christian who decides to vote for a candidate of either party may have valid biblically centered reasons for making that choice. So here's the thing. I understand like, well, you know what? I, I don't, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to abort a baby. I'm not going to do this. But they're really good with the poor. They're really good with helping people. You know, they're really good with this and that and the other. Maybe. But like, are they though still? Right? Because I mean, let's be real here. Like both, both major parties are pretty corrupt. And yet at least there's still some that say out loud that they're pro- natural marriage they're pro especially uh family and life and everything else now do they get a handle on divorce and other such things no they should because that's really where this starts 50 60 years ago no fault divorce it's not new you know oh two guys are getting married oh no everything's falling apart like it's been falling apart for a long time so it's not like the gop is some you know stellar cinderella that's just great and you know they don't do anything wrong not hardly at all i mean their corruption is thick as well it's just the democrats are exponentially more so and you know, i mean like i think the only person i could ever actually vote for would be like a tulsi gabbard but that's just me i'm sharing a little bit about me you know drop a comment if you think i'm a heretic or something but anyway but she doesn't think like a regular democrat like you read the platforms of 2020 for example and they're just antithetically biblical like multiple different places and you have places like uh blexit here if you remember this Candace Owens, among other people, it's black exit, just like Brexit, Britain exit of the European Union. This was uh, black people leaving the Democratic Party by and large. Founder, foundation, Blexit against CRT, right? So they're against CRT. There's different chapters. This is basically a response to Black Lives Matter, among other things. And like Black Lives Matter and other organizations like that, they're not actually helping people. That's the thing. They're helping themselves. All the people, you know, the Nancy Pelosi's and many of these other politicians, even, you know, the Mitch McConnell's, he's my senator here in Kentucky, one of them. And, you know, they really help themselves. They don't really do much for the common man. I mean, just look at Obama in eight years of Obama did the inner cities and all the neighborhoods did Detroit and Chicago and Baltimore and all these uh, predominantly black uh, communities get better. I mean, with, with black police chiefs and black mayors and black this, and, and they didn't get any better. And people with more melanin are saying, I'm done. Forget you guys. You guys aren't doing anything. GOP is this, 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 this. These are all the pro things. Forget this. we got the walkaway campaign. This guy was in, uh, is and was in Hollywood, Brandon Straka. Uh, this has been going on for several years now. Also testimonials. We can see similarly. Uh, to that as well, basically different people saying they're walking away from the Democratic Party. Um, and this is kind of just anyone, not just a particular ethnic group. Blair White, very inappropriate dress, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, this channel's for grownups, I guess. <laughs> no, 
that's that's the extent of it. Uh, anyway, so there's there's other people out in the world because these aren't Christian organizations who are saying, you know what, we're, we're done. And yet the RLC, it's like it's like there's almost this about face, this turning, this shifting of like Christians are on one side, you know, far right, if you want to just use the term, and the world's on the far left, and then like it's doing this, and like the the table is shifting, and you still have the positions over here and over here. I mean, again, you look at things like, now they're not Christian again, PragerU, Blaze, and others that are congratulating uh, Dave Rubin and his his uh, friend on having a baby. But they're not having a baby, right? And, you know, they're renting wombs. They're depriving their children of mothers. And and, and I like Dave Rubin. I really do. I, I think he's genuine. People can change. A lot of people are like, oh, he's just a, a, a gay darling of the, the right, blah, blah, blah. It's like he came to the understanding that the left also was corrupt. People do that all the time. It's not that it's not that unusual, actually. And the older you get, the more you realize, oh, I was an idiot. Dave Rubin can change, but he's also a same-sex attracted guy. Now, so the conservatism only goes so far. Now, he's talked to many, he's talked to several Christians over the years uh jordan peterson among among others too he's not a christian but at least they understand like there's more there's something more than our material naturalistic understanding of the world we're not just animated uh godless dirt we are dirt yes but we're dirt made in god's image uh we have a soul we have a spirit so back to this christians on both sides uh, theologically conservative christians who vote Democrat may not approve of abortion and Christians who vote Republican candidates do not want to hurt the poor. Okay. But see, here's the thing. Democrats like also hurt the poor all the time, like routinely. And it's evident with eight years of Obama, things have gotten worse, not better. Now I know we had Trump after that. And now we have Biden, but like what policies exactly are helping the poor handing money out to people isn't ever really helping anybody, maybe for a very short time. And we've actually, to be totally transparent, we've we've taken some assistance in the past and, you know, through school and just working and just trying to figure out life, there's nothing wrong with assistance if you're trying to figure out how you're going to do. But if you have the ability to work and you're not trying to better yourself in some way, it's nonsense that you're, you're not helping anybody by handing stuff out. People the Democratic Party, by and large, wants to keep people poor. Why? Because people are more easily swayed. People are more easily controlled. Vote for a different political parties, even though they share similar convictions about the authority of Scripture and the importance of faith. So, again, a lot of uh, white evangelicals, African-American women. This, again, you have to question and say, yeah, uh, okay, but like, but what, 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 what are you getting at, ultimately? Because, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into this, make like super, super political. Um, but we have a voice, right? We do have a vote, uh, sort of. And so let's still use it. Let's still do it and not just be fools with it and try and make excuses. Because now what they're doing, they're making excuses. I mean, David Platt wrote a book in 2020 right before it came out, you know, it was like make an informed choice. And they're trying to like make an, ex they're going to find everything bad about the GOP. And there's a lot of bad about the GOP, trust me. And, and I barely pay attention to it, but then they want to lift up everything good about the, the Dems. And it's like, I don't, the people who hate you, this is the party of Hollywood. This is the party of the mainstream media who relentlessly lied to you and who have been lying to us for over two years about nearly everything. And really, two plus decades to be real they don't love god they don't love the scripture they ridicule and mock you and make fun of you why are you wasting your time stop going to church stop singing those songs stop talking about jesus shut up about jesus shut up about the bible shut up about god shut up about the spirit shut up like it they hate it they hate you stop voting for them just stop there are other ways, and the only way to shift it, if you know, well, the GOP is corrupt, well, then find a different party. There are actually other parties, and we have, trust me, we have way more power and way more votes and, and actual differences than we do, you know, others in Canada, for sure. Canada is just total lost cause, in my opinion, and even England, which is, is not nearly as lost, but more lost than the United States. Pro-life Christians who decry Roe v. Wade, for example, and often have very fuzzy understanding of who gets abortions in the United States today, 
what the trend lines in abortion are and what happens will happen in a state law if Roe is overturned. Well, you know what will happen if Roe is overturned? Babies will stop being murdered legally. So yes, uh, darker skinned women, more melanated, melanated plus women, black women, have abortions significantly higher. You can look, talk to, uh, find that out in many places. And they only are a part of the population. I forget the number, so I won't use it. But it's like two to three times more than the average other woman. Why? Well, because their communities where they live are screwed up. But it goes back to further the family. It goes back to fatherlessness. It goes back to people not getting married. It goes back to not having education, not opportunity. Everybody has opportunity in this, in this country. Everybody does. And it is overwhelmingly true. And if you can look at other people who have made it successful and say, look, this guy get it, this guy get it, she got it, she got it, he got it, and so on. I mean, just look at you know last week's Chris Rock and uh, Will Smith, two millionaires. And it's like, oh, this is about white supremacy. It's just some off the hinge, nonsensical people, just wicked nonsense being spewed from leftists. And it's like, I don't even know. It's raining right now. If you hear the rain, uh, it's like that nice little, you know, noise machine in the background. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's really about patriarchy. It's really about this. It's really about 400 years of oppression and Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. You know, he's getting back at all the slave masters from 300 years ago. What? Like, <laughs> no, one millionaire slapped another millionaire in the face. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just too much. Like, that's what happened, people. That's what happened. N nothing else. It, it has nothing. Chris Rock got slapped by Will Smith. For white, 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 less melanated conservative Christians to be able to learn, learn from the perspective of a vast majority of black, more melanated Christians, they need to be willing to consider the possibility of economic and legal structures may exist to make it difficult for large numbers of hardworking people to escape from poverty. But see, we have the ability to escape from poverty and almost never is it a government handout. Almost never. What the government should do is get out of the way. That's what the government should do. Less restriction, less taxes, less regulation, and get out of the way and let people, because ultimately what this is, this is actual actual partiality, actual, if you want to use the modern parlance, racism. And I have multiple conversations of Contra Talks where I sit down with people that those drop on Saturdays, by the way. I drop those on Saturdays, usually, um, usually midday. That's also on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Music as well. So you can find Contra Talk there. Not this, uh, Contra Thoughts, although I might put it up at some point. But right now I've just got Contra Talk. But more than one of my guests we've talked about, a lot of them are YouTubers and just kind of sharing their testimony. They're Christians. They're not black Christians. They're just Christians. They're followers of Christ. They've been redeemed and washed by the blood of the lamb. And they don't want a handout. They don't want to be told, hey, oh, oh yeah, you know. And the little the little affirmative action, the, the uh, NC, NAACP, the this, the this, they don't want any of that. They just want an opportunity to compete. Same thing we, we saw with not only Kamala Harris uh, as being picked for VP and now with uh, the Supreme Court. What they're actually doing, and I've said this before, and we'll just close with this, but what they're actually doing when they say that, they say, this woman cannot compete with other people. So what we need to do is we need to have a special class, a special race, right? It's like having a hundred, you know, hundred meter dash. Who's the fastest? You know, it's a real short distance, right? It's the fast one. Just boom, hundred meters done. Well, I know you're not very fast, but I still want you to compete. And I still want, I'm still going to give a medal to the best person here. So what we're going to do is say, we're going to have, instead of eight people race at once, we're just going to have two. We're going to have this person and this person. You're both female. You're both more melanated. You're both from this ethnic background. All right, ready, set, go. And one of you is going to get the gold. So you have a 50% chance of getting a gold medal, right? And meanwhile, other people who might be faster are sitting by the sidelines being like, okay, you know, whatever. I'm not competing. They're not competing. Like, we're not even in the same league. What they have to do is they say, you're not smart enough to compete. You're not good enough to compete with everybody else. That's what the, he did. Biden did with 
uh, Harris, and that's what he's done with uh, Brown and Jackson. And and people think like, oh yeah, we're lifting up women. No, you're actually being partial. You're showing partiality, and that's a sin. You're showing partiality that's the opposite of equality. It's the opposite of goodness. It's the opposite of what the right thing to do is. Mark it. That's what's happening. But that's what the world does. That's what the left is doing. That's why I'm against the world. Okay, I'm against this nonsense. No, don't vote for somebody who does baby murder. Not only that, but somebody who's unabashedly pro-destruction of the family, pro-handouts, pro-big government, pro open borders. I mean, there's, let's be real here. There's like zero redeeming quality. And this might step, I might step on some toes, but there's like no redeeming quality to being a Democrat. There might've been my grandma who died 15 years ago was a lifelong Democrat, but that's like JFK Democrats from like the sixties. And you look at the two platforms from 1960, by the way, if you have time, go do this 1960 platform for the Dems, 1960 platform for GOP. It's practically identical. Now, We're talking about vastly two different religions. Two different religions is basically the comparison. I know the GOP. Listen, the GOP is full of corrupt stooges too, but at least there's still inklings. There's still people operating in there. Anyway, stop making... Listen, if you you convictionally pray and you think the Lord is doing right and you're this and this and this, and you can stand before God and say, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to stand for all these things you're against, Lord. But for this one reason... You know what? Fine. I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I just, I just, I just can't. So anyway, ERLC should be ashamed of themselves once again, because they are pushing nonsense and trying to tell people, oh yeah, sit down and listen. This is this. I mean, willing, consider possibilities, blah, 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 blah. Yes. The possibilities, the economic should be in fact reversed. It should be removed restrictions, handouts, everything else. Now, if you really need something, Fine, I'm, I'm fine, a short-term handout, but that person needs to be able to get a job, not $4, $5 gas, not roads that don't work, not governments that are shutting down businesses, you know, for a an illness, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just, I could keep going, I'm not going to. Be against the world for the world, okay? Hope this is helpful. And um, drop a comment, tell me, let me know. Um, you know, I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to be, salacious or step on toes unnecessarily but think before you vote go vote please go vote it's coming up in november we've got the midterms um and there's some primaries probably in may in your area as well so anyway go vote vote your convictions we can still do it probably we're physically doing it whether it counts or not is another story y'all take care have a great day